<laughs> right then guys, uh, welcome back to Lime Bites YouTube channel. Um, if you've just watched the last video then you'll have seen me leaving Top of Manor and I'm making my way over to Club Water in the um, water park. So, got another 20 miles to go, about 30 minutes left. Um, just stopped to get some supplies, also known as food, for the um, next 24 hours or so and yeah hopefully we'll get into it i'm gonna have a walk around when we get there need to pick up some gas from the tackle den as well um but i'm feeling confident the weather's looking carpy so yeah um if you're new to the channel remember to like share subscribe all that good stuff hit that subscribe button and like it's one of your rods going off i'd love to get to um 600 subscribers by the end of april so yeah i appreciate all uh, all subscribers so far and uh hope you enjoy this episode So I'm just having a look around now, just to see if I can find anything, and there's no immediate signs. I mean, the lake's actually dead, which I'm really surprised at, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I'm just going to keep walking around and see what we can find, but it's looking good. So the peg that you can see just over there um, is known as a bowl, and that's because apparently, I've been told, um, deepest water is out in front of that. Um, I've been looking now for about 5-10 minutes, but still not seen anything show. Uh, down in the bottom, in the car park under the lake, I did see a fish bow wave in the margins, so I don't know whether I might go and explore that a little bit more. So, I think someone's seen what I've just seen. Um, cars just pulled up and stopped in um, the pegs that I was looking, looking at coming up here and um, getting an eye on to. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! So, yeah, I mean, Hopefully he's just stopping and he's not going to stay for the session because um, I'd quite like to get in there myself and have a good watch but we'll drive around the other side of the lake now and see what we can find. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. The only thing I saw was that fish bow wave in the margins and since then, nothing. I'm now on the opposite side of the lake to what I, um, I fished on recently and I'm just wondering whether coming on this side would be a better shot. Um, rather than sticking myself at the far end of this lake a couple of the pegs just down to my left here um, I can actually get to the spots that I want to from there but it also gives me a bit more water to command and um, yeah I'm, I'm not right at one extreme of the lake um, my thinking being hopefully it won't push too many fish down there so I'm gonna get the kit out of the car I think that that might have been yep tufty but yeah, it's looking good. So we'll get the kit out of the van now. It's a shit state. I need to go and dip the nets. And um, yeah, I'll uh, let you guys know if there's anything happening later on. So I'm uh, just starting to type some solid bags now. Um, spent about maybe the best part of an hour trying to find two spots. And uh, yeah, eventually found two that I was really happy with. I found the first one really, really quickly. Um, like, within a couple of casts, it's pretty much directly out in front of me um, at about six, seven wraps and there's a nice, nice gravel spot um, and yeah, it just, yeah. it's long rather than wide so it's almost like a scar running back to me that goes on for maybe, I'd estimate 10, 10, 12 feet, something like that. But I mean, in terms of the size, it's about, in terms of the width, it's probably about, um, God, what is it? It's probably about a foot and a half, two foot maybe across. Um, so it's not big enough for me that I can, from this angle at least, to present two rods on it um, neatly. So yeah, once I'd found that spot, which I was pretty happy with, um, cracked on trying to find another spot and, um, yeah, eventually found found one which I knew was there already, but I, I wanted to try and find something different, and that's a spot about a rod length off the island to my left, um, in my water, just about. And it is, um, yeah, it's pretty pretty open and gravelly there, um, intermittent with like a bit of a bit of silt. So more than happy enough to present a bait on that. Um, it's not the ideal, but I mean, I'm just happy. I'm buzzing with that first one. So in terms of tactics that we're using, um, exactly the same as in the last blog. So I've basically, I'm solid bagging it again. Um, I've got a nice mix of um, 
milk and nut crush that I'm then mixing in with a bit of the main line and basically just the aim of the game is sweetness. I've got dead maggots as well and live maggots. Um, I'm not using live maggots on anything other than uh, the hook bait itself um, which I'll show you from one of the previous videos gone by. Um, but yeah, the, literally the only thing that I want there is, is live maggots. And I've actually seen a fish show over my spot after I um, put a couple of spawns out. So I'm feeling pretty confident. The, um, normally what happens is you spawn out on here and um, yeah, the wildfowl goes mental, clears your spot out and then clears off. But actually um, what happened today was completely different. I cast out, um, spawned out and a couple of fizzers started showing and then after that it looked like something rolled and uh, yeah the birds cleared off pretty quickly so more than happy with that so I'm just gonna get these solid bags tied out and then we'll get them out and then I'll talk you through the rig that I'm using but it's the classic and the lads that watch this at work are gonna laugh um, it's my solid bag rig with a um, tied German rig style with a wafter um, so they're non-fishing at work but they've they they watch the YouTube channel God knows why um, shout out to Tom and Ollie and uh, yeah they find German rig and wafter they love in the terminology so that one's for you lads but yeah essentially that's my solid bag I'm just gonna tidy it up now tie it off and um, yeah we'll then crack on getting these out Right guys, so it's, it's been quite quiet and um, I've been looking out on the water, I've pretty much spent the entire time looking out there and I've noticed at about, like pretty much on the opposite side of the bank, there's some fish showing and they, they keep on crashing, just get that in focus there, they keep crashing out in front of me and there's another one there so they're definitely on the move. So what I'm going to do is um, just change up this solid bag rig that I'm using at the moment and fire another solid bag out there um, and hopefully that will bring something on. Now I've just seen that fish roll um, between the two islands now so they're actually getting closer and into a more comfortable range so what we'll do is I'll just show you through the, the rig that I'm going to be using now and uh, how I've changed it. So I've got my normal, normal standard German rig that I've got um, but I've already taken the bead off so what we'll do now is I'll take, take that off there. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is um, get one of the rig rings, the micro rig rings that um, Pebo Armour do. I'll show you that on the screen in a moment. And uh, yeah, we're just simply going to pop that onto the shank of the hook. Hopefully we can get hold on. There we go. Alright then, so yeah, we've got a hook there. Focus again. There we go. And all I'm going to do is simply take that, put it on, and you put it sat there like that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of the hook beads from Hobo Armour that you can see there. Um, I've got these ones in black, and all I'm going to do is place the one that I've just taken off as it is broken. As they are quite delicate once once you've got them on. So yeah, literally just gonna pop that on there quickly as so. And then there you can see we've got the start of our rig. Next thing I'm gonna do, right, is I'm gonna get the wafter that I'm planning on using. So in this case, what we're using is the pink northern specials that I've had some decent success on the last few days. And all we're going to do is get one of those onto the hair. So, literally just got a baiting needle, and as you can see there, I'm just going to pop that on there. Right then guys, now because I'm not using the um, bait screw anymore, I've got to use bait floss. So, what we'll do is, I'm all fingers and thumbs at the moment, but if you can see that there, I'm just going to thread that through like that so that it's on either side of the bait screw. 
quite simple. Next I'm going to take the Northern Special Wafter that I'm using in this case. Um, although I have got some exciting news to talk to you about on the bait front in a, uh, another episode of this which will be getting filmed next week. Um, all being well, all we're going to do is put that on there and then I'm going to pull this down right the way to the swivel. Now I'm going to try and get that wafter to sit on the swivel as best I can as you can see like that. Next comes the finicky part so I'm going to get that nipped in the bud and then we'll fast forward to that in a moment. Happy days. Right and lads, like I said this next bit is the finicky bit so I've got a little baiting, um, well a little sewing needle here and uh, I've threaded it through one side of the um, the, the string that we've got on there. Right, and so what we need now is some of everyone's favourite wrigglers, and all we're going to do is thread those on like that onto the needle. So I'm going to put between 15 and 20 on here, um, as I want it to be a nice, neat ball uh, that sticks out. Now, I'm trying to thread them on as gently as I can, similarly to how you would if you're fishing on the hook for silvers. Right, just try and nick them on. Um, so that they wiggle as much as possible. All right, so once we've done that, all we're going to do is start sliding the maggots gently down the hook. The hook, the, um, the string, like that. And then we're going to pull that needle out. And as you can see, we're starting to get there. So next, all I'm going to do is put a couple of overhand knots in there, like that. And I'm going to pull that down as tight as I can. Then we'll take the two tag ends, just cut those off. And then, as you can see, we've got a lovely little wafter rig that will sit there, just like that. Right then guys, excuse the hair, it's gone mental, but yeah, it's just coming up half four and God, the temperature's dropped. Um, I've just been on the conference call for the last hour with work. Um, and whilst I've been doing that, I've been sat there paying probably more attention to the bank. Um, and the fish have stopped showing that right in front of me. Now, I did manage to get a bag out onto them on the left hand side and nearly went arse over tears as I went into the water. Uh, I've got to push myself out a bit because of the low hanging branches that are in this pond. <laughs> it slipped on a rock. Um, which, yeah, had there been anyone else on the lake, would have, would have looked hilarious. But it's gone really quiet. Um, those fish were definitely feeding. Um, it wasn't like you see fish at the start of spring where they're, they're jumping out and physically smashing into the water and trying to get leeches and parasites off them. They were, it was kind of the coming up and then they, they were rolling and cleaning the gills. So it was clearly feeding. And I have seen bubbles as well, um, but just nothing's, nothing's come to fruition yet. I feel quite out of touch with this lake. Having been off it for the last two months, um, I, I don't feel like I'm as tuned into it. I've got a month left on here before I turn my attention to my water that will sound for the next, um, next season. And yeah, I feel like I've not really got into this um, as much as I wanted to on this lake. It has started to make me raise some questions whether I keep on going on with this lake throughout the course of the summer and don't focus on the other one at all and put that off to next year. But I'm leaning more to the woods this one will still be here and I'll be able to drop onto it as and when during the summer and the latter half of the summer so at the moment I'm going to continue with the plan and um, get onto that bigger lake because that's the type of fishing that I really do like doing but yeah I'm, I'm absolutely Baltic it's, it's finally stopped raining but God, I'm really feeling it tonight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put a couple more spawns out on each of the spots and tie up some fresh solid bags get those whacked out onto them and then uh, yeah we'll see what the night brings us but not feeling confident i was feeling confident earlier but right now it's not happening so yeah we just got to keep on going and uh I keep working hard as i normally do on most of the sessions and hopefully something comes off because uh, yeah one fish out of five or six sessions that I've done on here over the winter isn't really where I want it to be so okay let's uh, crack on head held up and uh, yeah hopefully a fish to show for it
As, as you can see, um, it's pretty much dark now. Just had a couple of learners on the right hand road, which is about six and a half wraps out on that clear spot that I found. Um, recast the rods both again on dark with fresh bags. And yeah, I was pretty happy with how they, they both went down. Um, both went down with a decent thud. Um, so we'll wait and see what the night brings. I'm going to make a brew now and just sit and enjoy the fact that it's not raining for the first time in nearly 48 hours. It's probably the driest I've been since I left the office on, uh, well, yes, yesterday afternoon. So yeah, I'm uh, just going to take this evening in and fingers crossed those line bites lead to something. Although every time I say that, nothing tends to happen. Um, up till now, when I've been on a bites tend to have happened around 11 o'clock and that is a that Ooh, quite a vicious liner there liner it was like a drop back but didn't really materialize into anything I did the clutch back up again and yeah it stayed pretty solid so fingers crossed that is something positive i'm going to switch the camera off now and uh yeah sit with my hands um, and move my legs because uh, hopefully this means something's going to happen. Much like I did in my uh, DOS pack last night, rods remained pretty static and um, undisturbed. So got into got into the DOS bag and was just watching out over the water until uh, probably about 11 o'clock and getting a lot of line bites on the right hand rod, the one that's on that nice strip of gravel and out in front of me. And I thought, you know what? Um, Something might happen here. I was messaging one of my mate, um, Scott, saying, you know, I think I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, next thing I know, I look at my um, clock on the phone and it's, yeah, half one. And the closest I've come to a carp is uh, a dream about fishing with um, Ali Hamidi and uh, Elliot Gray um, on the local park lake that used to be up near where I'm uh, from so yeah that was about as close to a cop as I got and even then the weather ruined that um, and there yeah so not ideal um, it's coming up about half seven now and if I'm honest I've, I've left the rods where they are because I'm happy with where they went and nothing's happened since um, I'm just toying up whether I can afford to stay rest of the day and then head back this evening to London um, but yeah I'm really really confused I genuinely thought that one of the rods was going to do something else like I went to went to sleep so confident and then woke up and nothing had happened but still remained confident and then woke up and yeah about six o'clock and it's starting to go light and still nothing so don't really know what to do um, I need to change something up. I don't really have any excuses. When I got here, um, Bailiff said that it had been fishing hard, but every time I've got here and spoken to one of the bailiffs, they've said it's not been fishing well. Uh, I imagine it's because it's such a shallow lake over winter. It really does get affected by the weather and we've had a lot of rain, but I mean, I saw fish rolling and I was getting liners. So there's no real excuse that I can work out in terms of conditions why I didn't put something on the bank. So you need to have a bit of a, a bit of a think with tactics. I mean, moving forward, I think maybe what I'm going to do on here is try fishing um, stiff hinge or chods. Um, either chods just off clear spots that I find where it's still low lying weed and scatter single baits um, around it or potentially fishing stiff hinge with like a low line pop up on the on the end of it um, again maybe with a bit of particle and boiling over the top but 
yeah, no excuse. Um, we just crack on. This is turning out to be quite a frustrating campaign. Um, but then again, I haven't been here for two months, so you know, I can't really call it a campaign because of work getting in the way. We'll crack on though. Um, still plenty of time in the bag, and uh, yeah, got a brew on the go, so life could be a lot, lot worse. But it'd be a lot better if we had a carp on the bank. So it's coming up about half seven now, and um, just making myself a brew. And the carp are putting on a bit of a display. I've had a fish crashing out just uh, where you can see the swan on the screen there, and. I think I'm going to tie another solid bag and uh, whack it out towards that spot. It's, yeah, quite frustrating. Um, <laughs> quite frustrating indeed, but, you know, maybe even, I might even put a chod out there on a single. Um, yeah, don't know, don't know what I'm supposed to do. There's another fish that's crashed out to the far left, so they are moving around, which gives me even less excuses for why I'm blanketing. Well guys, um, yeah, end of end of another session on the, the club lake. Um, didn't go to plan, chucked a chod out, and uh, yeah, um, as I was recasting one of the solid bags, had a crack off, and it was at that point I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna call it here because I'm not getting anywhere. So yeah, now back in the car park, um, just making a brief for the road. And uh, I'll be back down, I think, next Monday or Tuesday um, before I head away for the weekend with work. Um, I do think the lake's starting to waken up. Um, seeing fish showing constantly um, over the last 24 hours, so I'm really surprised I, I was on the fish. Uh, my clear age didn't fish well enough. So, yeah, we'll move on and uh, go again. But. Um, thanks for watching this episode. Remember to do all that good stuff like like, subscribe, and share. Um, it means the it means a lot to us. We put a lot of time and effort into filming these, and a lot of the time you really can't be asked filming stuff because you just want to sit there and uh, watch. So it is like fishing with the handbrake on to um, use a phrase that gets thrown around a lot. So yeah, I'm uh, going to finish off this brew here, and then I'll be on my way. So if you're on the bank, tight lines, wet nets, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.